yeah, I, I wanted to make a, an elevated genre film, but also a sort of detailed character study that um, explored um, our society's, you know, desperate need for validation. Um, the film's universal appeal lies in the dilemmas it presents. If you could achieve your lifelong dream overnight, would you do it? Uh, especially if you felt like you truly deserved it. And under what circumstances or conditions would you commit a seemingly victimless crime? And how far would you go not to get caught? Um, I think, I think it's really important as a director to always have a dialogue with your actors um, and to hear, you know, this character that you guys are creating together is really a collaboration. Um, and so, I mean, for instance, I'll, I'll talk about Alex, for example, he wanted to he wanted to cut his hair in a certain way because he felt like um, that's what Jesse's hair would be like. And I was like, I love that. And he sort of, he had it sort of trimmed up on the sides and it was like, I've never seen Alex look like that before. And he wanted, you know, he wanted his ear pierced. And I was like, okay, let's do that. And, you know, he created a social media account. He, in, in Jesse's voice called Jesse Wilcox Loves Peace. And he would create, um, you know, posts in his voice leading up to the um, shoot and all throughout the shoot. Um, and he would write poems that he would send to me and, and you know, a few of them actually made it into the film. But he, you know, he's someone that wholly embodied um, the Jesse character and took what I sort of gave him and, and elevated it. Kiersey and I had, you know, numerous conversations about who this, this, um, you know, who Susie was and how she would dress. And so much of her clothing, for example, was, um, you know, we, we bought at thrift stores second hands with the ideas that like, you know, it was stuff from that from her mom, um, old stuff that her mom had. She doesn't have the ability or the, the money to go to the, and get the newest trends. Um, she, you know, she is working three jobs and trying to go to school and um, just, you know, support her and her mom and close with like the last thing that, you know, she she cares about. Um, and and it's beautiful. She doesn't care about that. That's not something that she cares about. It's not um, on the forefront of her mind. Um, you know, her podcast, which what comes out of her mouth is the thing that's most important to her. Um, but, um, and with Rachel, I mean, Rachel and I had many conversations about Jillian. Um, Rachel, such, I mean, such a talent, so, so plucky, so, um, effortless. Um, there's probably another movie where, you know, it's just Jillian. I could have made the movie just about Jillian in, a, in, a, in another sort of version of it, but she's, she's such a, a delight. Um, and all, all three actors, um, along with Jim Gaffigan, Ken Marino. Um, I mean, all, all of all my actors in this movie, I got, got very, very lucky. They're such pros um, and really brought such um, brilliant depth, but also, I mean, just had such interesting takes. They were just so funny, so funny. Um, and it was such a joy to, to work with them um, on set, but also get to sort of craft their performances in the edit. Yeah, I think um, from the get-go, I well, I wanted because it's an elevated genre film. It's um, it's a satire. It's the world is um, is is heightened. I wanted to utilize, um, you know, I, w I was really interested in in that the sort of kinetic energy, making a movie that moved. So whether it be um, camera movement or quick cuts or, um, you know, or our transitions, I wanted 
the energy to feel um, kinetic. I, I, I also, you know, it's a, it's a very quirky film. So, you know, I, I'd sort of spoken to my editor very early in the game about, you know, about uh, really, you know, interesting transitions and split screens and morphs. And um, there's a lot of graphics. Um, it's, you know, it's quite stylized, this film. So, you know, I, all of those different elements contribute to sort of what you see um, and that sort of energy. You know, I, I had, uh, I, I instituted this uh, film club um, for all my department heads and we met um, once a week on Saturday mornings. I would assign, you know, one or two movies a week. Um, you know, based on camera movement or tone or graphics or color palette or costume. Um, uh, and we would sort of talk about it and, and talk about why why I assigned it. But there were a few films um, specifically that, you know, I can talk about, you know, were an inspiration. Um, I, assigned, I assigned Amelie, um, which was you know an inspiration for its uh, really creative camera work and its transitions and its color palette. I assigned uh, to die for, which is um, a Gus Van Sant movie um, because it had a very similar tone. Um, and then you know sp specific color palette, creative graphics and editing. I assigned election. Um, very similar. That's um, uh, Alexander Payne for uh, tone and graphics and camera work. Uh, Lady Vengeance, tone and transitions. La Femme Nikita for its lighting and texture and tone. Last but certainly not least, uh, In the Mood for Love, Long Car Wai. Very different tonally, but uh, very sumptuous colors, um, very uh, textured. Uh, you know, very specific color palette. Um, but, you know, those films, I would say, were were a, a few of the films that I assigned, um, along with the photography of Alex Praker and Gregory Crudson. But those were, um, those were some of my inspirations. But, uh, yeah, there, I, you know, I, t I took bit bits and bobs from a lot of different films and, um, and, and, and made Susie. Yeah, music is so important to me. Um, I, as I sort of mentioned before, it I think music is a really uh, wonderful way to establish tone, um, est especially with a tone like Susie, where it's sort of constantly towing that line between satire and thriller. So I created a, a Spotify playlist um, of sort of the music that I thought would, that felt like Susie Searches to me. And I sent it um, to my entire crew really early on to, to sort of help elucidate some things that they could listen to while they were driving to set in the morning or if they just wanted any sort of peek into my brain um, um, along with all the other things I did, like the storyboard and the spot, uh, the, the Dropbox folder um, that I created, but anything that I could sort of make to help translate my vision, um, I wanted to to do because you know everyone metabolizes information differently, and um, and I think it's important to and so back to the music, um, you know. Mitski and Perfume Genius, a lot of the other, Natalie Bergman, um, uh, Talk to the Lord, which is on there. Um, a lot of, truth be told, um, every single song in Suzy, minus I think one, was on that Spotify playlist that I made, um, which is I'm, which is such a testament also to our music supervisor because these are. Um, you know, these are pieces that I I love that I that we were editing to, and I had no idea if we were, were going to be able to get because um, 
of our budgetary constraints. Joe was able to, and you know, you, you cut them into your movie and you're like hoping, praying, cross your fingers that, um, you know, that I'm Mitski and Perfume Genius, they, uh, they both, I, I was told, watched the film and then, you know, and then said yes after, after they watched the film. And um, I love artists. I think I wrote, if I recall, I think I wrote letters to both artists because those two songs specifically were, um, were really important to me. And they were such like, they had such an emotional weight behind them and sort of our, I mean, at least with, you know, washing machine art, we were editing to Mitski to that song. Um, so it was, it had such a, like a, an upbeat, like syncopated beat that we were editing to and learning by Perfume Genius. That was, you know, really important for me, like that sort of emotional weight when Susie sort of trying to figure out what her next move is. Um, she's at a, at a low point. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I just, I feel so lucky that uh, I was able to get all the music. So John Notches was our brilliant composer and uh, he came on quite early. Uh, I think he was like one of the earliest people that I, um, started working with it just because um, music is so important to my process. And um, very early on before we were shooting, he was sort of sending me music that I would give notes to. We sort of talked about Susie's, um, the theme of her uh, pod, her podcast music, um, and uh, which we were able to sort of implement or use um, while we were in the edit, while we were assembling the film. Um, but we had a really wonderful shorthand um, in terms of, you know, this, what I was looking for with score, this sort of non-traditional percussive sounds. And um, he sort of took what I wanted. And um, I also sent him a, a Spotify playlist of, of score, a thing of, you know, specific score that I was really interested in. And he, um, he listened to that and, you know, and, and sort of you were able to sort of take what I wanted and elevated that to a, a whole new level. Yeah, I, um, I'm so excited for you to see this film. Um, it was such a joy to make. I, I can't say enough about my incredible cast and crew. Um, and this was a true sort of labor of love. Um, and I hope it makes you laugh. I hope it, you know, puts you on the edge of your seat. I hope it it keeps you on your toes. Um, it's, I think it's a really fun story. Um, I think most, I, I, I hope that it makes you a little bit more empathetic and compassionate. Um, you know, we live in, in such a interesting time. Um, we live in a cancel culture where people are so quick to judge people and make assumptions about them based on something that happens. And I, I hope that this make, movie sort of makes you take a step back and. Um, understand that maybe people are complicated and um and multifaceted and and human even though Susie's actions are slightly morally ambiguous i hope that you empathize with her as a character i hope you root for her um i hope you see yourself in her because i certainly do and if you like the film Tell your friends and um, and support the film because independent film means the most, the, you know, the most support it can get. College students, apparently he's been missing. I'm going to be famous one day when I solve this case and become a big hero. I'm Susie. It's okay. I owe my life to you. I'm just like still curious how you found him. Following me? 
SNS に取りつかれたインフルエンサーが巻き起こす予測不能のスリラー「スージーサーチ